Hey, uh, welcome. This is uh, Will Lumpkins from the IEEE uh, Consumer Electronics Magazine, and uh, I'm honored today to do an interview with uh, Capti, um, which is a really exciting new company, and, uh, and I have their developer, uh, their founder here. We're going to talk with uh, uh, Eugene Borden, uh, and it, one of the amazing things about Eugene and his associate here with me today is that they're uh, tackling some exciting issues on uh, accessibility of information for people uh, that may be handicapped or may have some uh, extra challenges in their life. Uh, and, and also we want to talk a little bit about uh, changing the paradigm or changing the perspective of looking at objects. Um, so with me here we have Eugene Borden. Eugene, thanks. Hi, Bill. Hi. Um, and Eugene, I understand that you're an IEEE member. Yes, I am. That's wonderful. Proud. And you have your PhD is from from Stony Brook University, and I'm a part-time professor, research professor at Stony Brook University, and the full-time president and CEO of a company that is called Charm Tech Labs. And we're developing this charming technology we call Capti. Wow. And Capti is supposed to help people capture their freedom, freedom from the screen. Wow! Exciting. <laughs> it sounds like it has a lot of real uses. Now let me introduce my other guests we have here. A Miss East Coast, which is Jen Sodorova. Yeah. Now, Jen, now I understand you are also a PhD or PhD student currently. Right. I'm not only the beauty queen, but I'm also a PhD student in political science and the president of the student government at Stony Brook. Now, is that possible? I thought beautiful women were smart. I mean, I mean. That's exactly what I'm trying to prove wrong. I'm trying to break from the stereotypes about smart and beautiful women. Wow, that's wonderful. We're glad to have you here. We're going to ask you a couple more questions a little bit later. But Eugene, let's go back and talk about uh, Capti. Now, the demo you showed me was pretty impressive. And it, it looked to me, and I think you mentioned this, that um, you looked at this originally as a way to assist uh, people, kind of as an adaptive technology. Yep. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so I did my PhD trying to help people with vision impairments browse the web more efficiently because they, they spend 10 to 100 times more time browsing web pages compared to sighted people. So I did research on that and I finally got tired of just writing papers and decided to start a company and make a difference in people's lives. And then we quickly realized that if we wanted to develop a product specifically for people with vision impairments, it would be very expensive and we probably wouldn't survive as a company. We also realized that, that the, the problems that people with vision impairments experience, uh, we all experience them to a different extent in different situations. Let's say if you're driving, then you're situationally impaired, you cannot look at the screen. Uh, if you're busy, you're time impaired, you don't have time to, to read. So maybe you could multitask and uh, listen while you're driving, like you're listening to a radio or podcasts. You can be listening while you're exercising in the gym. So there are very many different situations when this technology could be useful. Exercising in the gym, yeah, I think I could probably use that. Uh, my goal is to look like you someday. You know, that, would, that would be a goal. Well, cool, that sounds pretty amazing. So, how does uh, the product work? Do you, do you have anything that you can show us? Right? Yes, yeah, sure. Right now, we have an iPhone application. Let me run the app. What we have here is a playlist of things that I would like to listen to. And uh, to start listening, I, all I need to do is to tap. Virtual one tailor of the measures you up for perfect online shop. Body scanners and virtual fitting room. And I can place my iPhone uh, in my pocket and just go about my business and listen, listen to the news. Or I can uh, run on a treadmill, hook it up to the car stereo, and uh, drive safely using the steering wheel to control the playback. Uh, the way you add content to the playlist is you go to the menu. And uh, here we have different sources, a browser, clipboard, Dropbox, Google Drive. So I'm going to go into the Dropbox. And here I had a folder prepared for CES. I have a book, Alice in Wonderland. It's an unprotected ebook. Uh, different files, document, PDF, uh, PowerPoint. It supports uh, several other formats. And all you need to do to edit this to the playlist is to press on one of these items. Uh, more interestingly, we have a embedded web browser that makes things very easy to read. So imagine having to interact with a page like this on the iPhone. You have to constantly zoom and click on an item, wait for it to load, and then again zoom, then pan. What you could do with Cap, just press this plus in the bottom, and you can select Read ASAP or Add to Playlist. Even better, you didn't even have to open this page. You can just press and hold on your link and add it to playlist. 
And if that was not convenient, you could press this button here in the upper right corner and you see the same web page, but, but much simplified, and just article links. And all you need to do is tap the ones that you would like to listen to. I'm going to return back to the playlist. And here I have somewhere in the bottom of the playlist, it's a long one. Uh, these items are loading as we speak. See, press race already loaded. So I'm going to press this. Clever cars with Android keep you online as you drive. Okay, Google. Start my car and switch on the heating. Switch to different voices, Australian, English. Clever cars with Android keep you online as you drive. Okay, Google. An American English voice. Clever cars with Android keep you online as you drive. Okay, Google. Start my no, car and switch on. Hi, I am Eric, an American English voice from Ivona. If you like the... There's another one. This is Hi, a voice. Hi, I am Ivy, an American English voice from Ivona. If you like the way I sound, I would be happy to read for you. So if we were to develop this application just for people with vision impairments, that would cost at least $50. Now, now this app is free, and it comes with a free voice, and... Uh, Voices, if you want additional voices, they go from $2 to $6, and they're yours to keep for life, and you can restore them on any of your iOS devices. Uh, this playlist that we have here, it is actually synchronizable, and if you just, if you're at the top of the playlist, you pull down, you will be able to synchronize, I'm not going to do it now, but uh, if you have an iPhone, iPod, iPad, uh, you will synchronize the same playlist, so you can actually start listening on your iPad at home as you're fixing a meal. To the morning news for example then you jump in your car hook this up to your stereo keep listening on the way to work from the same exact spot then you go to your workplace and listen to press releases different documents then go to the gym listen some more come home listen to your favorite ebook sometimes i go to sleep to this when wow. i fall, fall asleep yeah the, just listen to the latest technology news they're can really put you put you to sleep. <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah. CES, uh, I know I'm about ready to fall asleep for this week here at CES. Uh, but again, thank you for showing us the app. I think it's amazing that you provide the app for free, um, and then uh, you know, then people have a choice whether or not they want to uh, mm -hmm. get some of these voices. And I understand that you can actually try some of the voices for a period of time. Is yes. that true? You can try a voice for seven days. In fact, there's 20 voices, so you can try try them for like half a year. Just. But the thing is that eventually you will find the one that you really like and you would not want to downgrade to another voice. Sure. But, you know, you can get tired of, uh, let's say, a female voice and you switch to a male voice. And there are different timbres. Sure. There's Australian English, American English. We even have an Indian English voice because people in India, they prefer to listen uh, to English in their own, uh, with their own accent. It's much more You maybe have like a, a, a subservient Japanese wife voice. That would make me feel more at home. No? no. Oh, well, I, I guess my wife wouldn't appreciate that anyway. So, mm -hmm. but... Uh, I think this that's a pretty cool technology, and and what we said it's amazing that uh, you're a young you know uh, IEEE member who uh, who's founded this company, and is burgeoning out, uh, looking at both helping people, as as well as uh, you know maybe helping yourself through uh, some entrepreneurship. I hope so too. I, I enjoy this greatly. Uh, this you know I, I never thought I would be so excited. I sometimes I forget to eat. And sleep. I, I, I see that, um, and maybe that's my maybe if I <laughs> maybe if I was more excited, I could forget to eat. Uh, that would help me. But let's talk a little bit more with Jen, if we may. Uh, Jen, I know you've been waiting here patiently. I know you've uh, been working now with uh, Eugene for a while, um, and I think as you mentioned, um, you're trying to break the stereotype that beautiful women aren't also talented as uh, uh, maybe political science majors or engineers or in other fields. So, can you tell me a little bit about that journey you've had to get where you are? I'd like to say that um, both me and Capti are freedom fighters. Uh, as a leader, researcher, and a model, I fight for freedom from stereotypes about smart and beautiful women. And I've been doing it for almost a year now. I have my own website. I have my own Facebook page. I try to mentor younger females. So you have a website. What would that website URL be? Could you tell us? Or? It's jensiderova.com. Jensiderova.com. So young women could go there, or other women could go there, and get more information and see how they can participate and help? Yes. And you have a Facebook page? Yes, the well, same name, Jensiderova. Jensiderova. Okay, great, great. So people could go there, take a look, like it, if, you know, see if there's some way that they could help and promote women. Um, I actually have a 24-year-old daughter myself uh, named Natasha. Uh, and uh, you know she I think has that same stereotypical problem where you know she's pretty and so guys look at her and think of her just as as a pretty girl and don't think of her about, about the intellect. So I think what you're doing is amazing, 
Is there anything else you want to add about your quest so far? Um, it's my first time in Vegas. I'm enjoying myself. Okay. And the way I'm fighting for freedom from stereotypes, kept is fighting for freedom from the screen. Sure. Well, great. Well, thank you so much, Chad. We really appreciate it. And just to wrap up, I want to say, you know, it was really great uh, to come out to the, uh, the internet with you. And uh, we couldn't have done this without Charbox, as uh, many of you know on his channel. He has a great bunch of video lineups, videos to see, and uh, we uh, love to see you again. So thank you so much again. Thank you very much. And I invite the viewers to go to captivevoice.com uh, to look at our website. We're going to have a desktop version coming up in about a month or two. We'll work on Windows and Mac computers. Wonderful. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Chip. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me.